Hi, and welcome back to St. Francis University. I'm Dr. Mary. I'm the chair of the biology department. I wanted to say a few words about why we're asking uh, students to wear masks in our classes. Uh, and it has to do, of course, with the COVID-19 pandemic. So these are some uh, images that I uh, took from the Center for Disease Controls, the CDC. Uh, and these were all clipped uh, at the end of last week. Uh, so as I'm recording this, this is August 16th. So it was the, uh, the end of last week when these data were absolutely current. But basically they're showing that we have seen a continuous ongoing increase in cases and that really hasn't let up um, nationwide. Similarly, we've continued to see an increase in deaths. And unfortunately that's been going up lately as well. Compared to this uh, this time last year, certainly, and even uh, the beginning of spring semester, certainly, uh, we've made considerable progress in terms of vaccination. We're at about nationwide, about 71% of all adults have received at least one dose. We would like to see that continue to increase, but that number has, uh, continue, ha has been increasing and ha is doing pretty well. Uh, ideally, we'd like to see that number get over 80, uh, 85%. And then uh, I know it's cut off a little bit with my, my little uh, picture in picture here, but overall, unfortunately, we are still seeing substantial transmission of the COVID-19 virus. And, and uh, here is some data that are sort of more nationwide and also showing uh, how it's varying by nation. You can see considerable parts of the country are, uh, are really suffering with COVID-19. There are a couple areas that are a little bit, uh, have a little bit less exposure. So red means the highest level of expo uh, of transmission. Nebraska seems to be doing pretty well for whatever reason, as uh, fortunately as are some parts of New York and some parts of Pennsylvania, maybe some parts of Michigan. Here's a map of Pennsylvania as of last Thursday. I guess the data are current as of August 10th. And you can see that uh, Certainly there are parts of Pennsylvania that are relatively moderate amounts of transmission. Uh, Cambria County, which is where St. Francis University is located, however, we are in a substantial re uh, region of substantial transmission, which means that there are over 50 cases per 100,000 people per week uh, that are coming in. So this is classified by the CDC as substantial levels of transmission. And with their fairly recent update to mass guidance, the recommendation is that in uh, areas where there is substantial or high levels, which would be the, the deep red uh, of transmission, uh, people should be wearing masks indoors. The, you can see that in our area, we are a bit behind, uh, quite a bit behind the national average in terms of vaccination rates. So about 51% of adults have received at least one dose of a vaccine uh, compared to 71% overall. We have seen an uptick in the uh, number of hospital COVID admissions and the number of ICU beds that are um, present within the last two, uh, seven days. And this is all uh, relative to Cambria County. You can see here are cases per day that we're seeing. And you know this is going back, this is that huge spike that we saw uh, last December, January, February. Uh, here we are right now, and you can see that it, we have been seeing an increase locally uh, in Cambria County. And we're certainly nowhere on the levels that we saw before, but the concern of course is that it might continue to rise. And the reason we're having all this trouble is that we're dealing with uh, a new variant of COVID-19. It's the Delta variant. Dr. Trimble in our department actually uh, mentioned or coined this idea that you could almost think of this as COVID-21 because in 2021, uh, we've seen this, uh, this dominance, sudden dominance of this particular variant. This is data from a uh, really nice website called Next Strain that you can use to look at all the different var variations of the COVID-19 virus. And what you can see is if we go back to that big peak that we saw last November, December, January, um, these were all, that was largely caused by strains that for the most part have petered out and died out. Uh, they've been replaced by other strains. So this is the alpha variant that you might have heard about, which didn't really behave that much differently from some of the others, but it was being tracked pretty heavily. That one is also on its way out. What we're seeing now though is that since you know, roughly the end of May, uh, June, uh, the dominant strain has become this Delta variant. So as of uh, the very end of July, which is where this data point is right here, 85% of national transmission uh, was this Delta variant and it's continuing to rise. And the reason that's a problem is that this variant is behaving differently than prior strains. It's fundamentally different. And so there are differences now that weren't really present if we go back into May, June, uh, even before the De Delta variant really kind of took off and became dominant. Here's what we're so worried about. Um, there's a variable that's called R naught. 
R0 is basically a measure of how many people, and if you were in a naive population, immunologically naive population, uh, where there was no resistance, how many people would each person that's infected pass that, trend, that infection to? So the R0 for the Delta variant is 6 to 7, which means, so that means that for every one person infected, again, they're expected to, uh, inf to infect 6 to 7 other individuals. Uh, all other strains of the COVID-19 virus, the R0 was two to three. So we're looking at a strain that is two to maybe even three times as infectious as prior strains. The reason is that it seems to create much higher levels of virus in a person's nasal pharynx than in previous strains, and therefore people shed quite a lot more virus than they used to. Uh, it, there's also some indications that it may cause more severe illness than previous uh, strains, and it seems to be affecting younger individuals than the prior strains were. So m many more young people are showing up in hospitals than had prior, uh, than they had in prior strains. Also, and maybe even most concerningly, vaccination seems to be less effective at preventing initial infection than previous strains. So this strain is still capable of infecting, having a breakthrough infection into a vaccinated individual. Now, the good news is those vaccinated individuals are very unlikely to uh, have really severe disease. So it's still very helpful to be vaccinated because it prevents you from hospitalization, from having to be hospitalized um, due to this virus. However, uh, there is indication, and there are data that support this, that vaccinated individuals can transmit the virus uh, to other people. And that's kind of a game changer, I think, in terms of our uh, mitigation measures for COVID-19. So how can we reduce spread? Well, one wonderful uh, thing to do is to vaccinate yourself. And I said, you can still transmit if you're vaccinated, but usually people are infectious for less time. And again, have much less risk of, uh, of contracting severe disease that would require hospitalization and be life-threatening. Uh, than individuals that are not vaccinated. We are uh, still at St. Francis offering vaccination clinics, including at the time I, I record this, one tomorrow. So on August 17th, there is a vaccination clinic that's available. It's really exciting. You can get a very good quality vaccine. That's the Moderna vaccine. Get your first dose now, and then uh, in a few weeks, you'll be able to get your second dose also through these clinics. It's completely free. There is a registration uh, uh, form that they would like you to fill out ahead of time. Uh, check your email. You received an email uh, last Thursday about this. The other important thing that we can do is we can mask up. So if we are wearing masks, just like in prior with prior strains, we uh, reduce the risk to ourselves and we substantially reduce the risk to others. So my mask protects, uh, protects you, your mask protects me, and our own masks protect ourselves a little bit as well. But this is an important way that we can look out for each other and help to prevent transmission on our campus and therefore hopefully have a very safe, healthy, and, uh, and, and uh, engaging semester. So thanks very much. I hope this uh, helps clarify some, uh, some things about what's going on right now with the Delta variant. Uh, and I look forward to uh, a really nice semester this fall. Thank you.